The first thing that came to mind was just slow down while you're eating. I think this is a really important one. And something that became um, increasingly clear to me was, uh, was something that was beneficial as I was writing Genius Kitchen. Digestion begins in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the most valuable compounds in foods sometimes take a little bit of time to be uh, developed, I guess you could say. For example, um, when we chew vegetables like arugula or beets that contain nitrates, humans don't have the enzymes to break, to reduce nitrates to nitrites, which then enter the nitric oxide pathway. A lot of people know that beets have nitrates. They can boost blood flow, reduce blood pressure. This is all true. But that conversion, we don't create those enzymes endogenously. It's the oral bacteria in our mouths mm. that are responsible for that conversion. So you need to mm. give the, the microbes in your mouth time to reduce the nitrate. And so slow down when you're chewing, especially um, veggies, like beets, like arugula, um, many other reasons to, to slow down while eating, but um, that's just one of them. So take the time, recognize that digestion begins in the mouth. This is not a metaphor. This is like reality. Number two would be to move more. So I don't know what kind of exercise regimen you're on, but um, just movement in general is, is medicinal for the brain. When you're sedentary for an extended period of time, blood literally drains from your brain. And mm. it's a little bit of movement that helps to reperfuse the brain. Your body acts like a pump. There was a mm. study that, a couple of years ago that found that just being um, submerged underwater with your head out, the pressure on your body caused an increase in blood flow to the brain. So moving your body, very important. With body. Even walking, walking even, is good for... Even walking, yeah. I mean, walking is great. I mean, we say even walking like it's like this like minimally viable <laughs> um, effort, but it really is like, I mean, we're engineered to walk, humans. Mm -hmm. So walk mm -hmm. more. I would say three, you really have to focus on your sleep and make sure that you're dialing in your sleep. Sleep quality and sleep duration are both important. One of the most effective things that you can do is try to get to bed roughly around the same time every night. One of the most important ways to encourage good quality sleep of sufficient duration is to exercise during the day, but not just any exercise. New research is showing that it's resistance training in particular that can help boost sleep quality more so than aerobic exercise. It helps build what's called sleep pressure, which is the phenomena that basically encourages you to, to pass out once your head hits the pillow. If you don't build up enough sleep, sleep pressure over the course of the day, or if you diffuse that sleep pressure with naps, you're just not going to sleep as well that night. So making sure that you are building adequate sleep pressure and you're being fairly consistent with your, with your sleep schedule. Four, I would say sweat regularly. Um, I am not a big sweater when I exercise, but I love saunas mm -hmm. and, uh, Big, big part of my health routine is, is sweating regularly in a sauna. We know that certain xenobiotic compounds are excreted in our sweat when we, uh, when we sweat. So making sure that you're doing that on a regular basis and also hydrating well afterwards, that's really important. Making sure that you're getting in your electrolytes, um, crucially important. And then lastly, exposure to sun. Sunlight you kind of alluded to, really important for anchoring our body's circadian rhythms. But also, it's not just that. It's not just the vitamin D that we create. The sun on your skin creates all these other beneficial compounds. Like I mentioned nitric oxide. Um, I had an expert on my podcast, a uh, board, physician board certified in sleep medicine, who was sharing how exposure to the infrared light, infrared rays from the sun during sort of like the dusk and dawn um, times of day was times of day when you get that like nice red light and, and infrared light causes your cells um, throughout your body to create melatonin, which is actually a very important and powerful antioxidant um, in your periphery. We often think of melatonin as being this like sleep hormone, right? Created in our pineal gland. But mm -hmm. we have melatonin expressed peripherally and it turns out that exposure to the infrared, ray, infrared rays from the sun actually spur this this melatonin generating process um which helps to keep us young and is a is a chemoprotectant helps fight cancer aging um so that's where you know uh i think the utility of like these red light devices may come into play i don't have any affiliation with any of these like these companies that make these like red light devices but um uh, i think that they can potentially play a, a health supportive role
If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.